Hello, thank you for joining me today. We're gonna spend a few minutes. I wanna read a, a, a verse out of Matthew uh, chapter 11, uh, verse 28. Uh, and I wanna talk a little bit about just stress and you know, we all deal with stress and the Bible has something to say about that. In fact, Jesus was a, a, a great at handling stress. Uh, Jesus was a somebody that was constantly under stress. He was a popular guy. People always wanted to be around him. Uh, people always um, had expectations of, of Jesus and what they thought he should do and, and when they thought he should do it. And so he's, he definitely understood and knew what it was to be under a lot, a tremendous amount of pressure and stress. And we live in a world I know where we, everything just moves so fast and and, and, and I, I know that anxiety and, and stress cause a lot of frustration, uh, even depression for people. And, and, and uh, people live under a tremendous amount of pressure. Uh, young people, old people, uh, middle people, you name it. We live under a tremendous amount of pressure. And sometimes we get so tired and we get frustrated and we just want some kind of relief or some kind of uh, just rest from the stress. And so Jesus says this, I love this promise, I love this invitation that Jesus gives us in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love that invitation, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Doesn't that sound good? Let's pray real quick, and then we're going to talk about that verse a little bit. Dear Jesus, we just thank you for this time that you've given us. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the promise of your word, Lord. And, and right now, Lord, we just thank you for the promise in Matthew uh, 28 that you give us, Lord, that if we come to you, that you'll give us rest, Lord. And I pray that you'd help us to understand that and that you'd help us uh, Lord, to be able to live that out. We love you and we thank you. We pray for your blessing and your presence in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus, like we said, was the guy that, that, that lived under a lot of pressure and, and, and knew what stress was. And, uh, uh, and you know, the reality is, is that, that life and living life and stress, they just kind of go hand in hand. It's part of the human experience that we, that we go through and we experience lots of different types of stress. There's no getting away from it. There's no getting around it, but, but people cope with that stress in different ways. And a lot of times uh, in unhealthy ways, we all deal with our stress in different ways. People turn to uh, uh, all kinds of unhealthy behaviors, be it uh, uh, drinking, uh, alcohol or drugs or eating, um, uh, overeating. Um, physical, emotional health can suffer from this. Um, and, and, and so we have all kinds of ways that we try to find rest or relief from the stress. But right here uh, in, the, in the scriptures, Jesus gives us the promise, come to me all you who are weary and I will give you rest. And uh, as we think about that and as I want us to uh, have an understanding of that because that's a great invitation to be able to come to Jesus and find true rest. How do we come to Jesus? We need to think about that a little bit. I think uh, some of the ways that we come to Jesus quite simply are just we spend time in prayer. We spend time uh, and we surround ourselves with God's people, uh, his church, and we spend time in fellowship with believers. We need to spend time in his word. Uh, uh, I'm so glad that you tuned in today. Um, but but uh, we're spending these moments in the Word together. We should be doing that daily, uh, uh, spending time in the Word, uh, just studying His Word and applying it to our lives. We need to cry out to Him in desperation when we're in need. We need to we need to sing to Him and praise Him. We, do you thank God every day for everything? Even on our worst days, God is good. Even, even when things are bad and we're super stressed and we feel like everything's coming apart, God has given us so much and there's so much to be grateful for. These are ways that we, that we come to Jesus. And so we need to ask ourselves when, 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 when we're really stressed out, we feel burdened and we feel, as the Bible says, weary or tired. What is it that you turn to? Who is it that you turn to? Is it Jesus? And if it's not, how do we start to turn to Jesus in a way that's 
uh, meaningful and, and uh, personal to, to, to us and who we are. And when we start to do that, we start to experience uh, through the Holy Spirit, we experience the presence and the rest uh, of God and the confidence in his promises. And so I think there's a, a, a few principles that we can look at uh, as we look at this scripture. And Jesus was an example of these principles. There's principles that Jesus give us that help us to really come to him and really uh, embrace this promise and experience the rest that's found in him. And the first one is, is identity or identification. I, what do I identify with? Jesus himself said in John chapter 8, verse 12, he said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He also says in John 14, 6, he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Pastor, why do why you read those, those passages? What's that all about? You know, it's simple. Jesus knew who he was. He had a very clear sense of identity. He knew who he was. Um, and, and so I think one of the first principles that we need to think about when we talk about handling stress and the pressures of life is that we need to know who we are. We need to have a clear sense of identity. Uh, it's important when we're thinking about stress and managing stress because I want to tell you something. If you don't know who you are, then you're going to let other people dictate to you who they think you should be or who they think you are. And, and, and we don't want to do that because we get pressured into being somebody that we're really not or somebody that we maybe even don't want to be. And I think a lot of stress in our lives and in, in our culture that we experience comes from the pressure of expectations of other people that they place on us and, and, and expectations of who they think we should be or who we need to be. And, and, and so we try to live up to those, those expectations. We try to live, uh, uh, we buckle under that pressure. We try to make people happy and be who they want us to be. But, but, but what we really need to figure out to, to, to eliminate that stress and that pressure in our life is figure out who God thinks we need to be, who God wants us to be, who the Lord created us to be. I really think that's the first step in balancing stress is, is to come to this fact and really be able to believe this and really be able to live in this, the, this identity and say that I'm, I'm a child of God, that God created me in his image to be in relationship with him. And that I'm no accident, I'm not here by mistake, that God has placed me here for such a time as this, that I've been placed on this earth with a purpose, that I'm deeply loved by God, that I'm uh, 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 completely, when I, when I receive Jesus Christ, and when I follow him, when I turn away from my sin and my brokenness, that, 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 that I am his child, that I'm accepted by God. And, and, and that God has a plan for my life and that God has said that I'm valuable and I'm significant because he created me and he created me in his image and he created me with his purposes. And so when we have that and we understand that, uh, it helps us to cope with a lot of stress in our life because people have all these expectations and all the, I think you should be this or Josh, I think you should be this. I experience it all the time. Well, pastor, if you're a pastor, you ought to be this way, or you ought to do this, or you ought to, I think you need to do this, or I think you need to speak on this. But I know who I am. I'm a child of the king. And so I spend my time and my life and my energy seeking what I believe God wants. God, what's your will for my life? Even this message that I bring to you today, I didn't call a bunch of people and ask them what I, they thought I should put online today. I prayed about it. I said, God, what? What do you have today? What, what, is, uh, what do you have for me, but what do you have for me to share that somebody needs to hear today? And God laid this passage on my heart that, 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 that man, this has been a stressful year. There's a lot of tired people. It's been a rough time. And there's this wonderful promise in scripture here. Uh, that, Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. Uh, God puts you here. You are significant. You are valuable. And God wants you to step into the identity that he's given you. But he wants you to turn away from the pressures of the world and what the world says you should be. And he wants you to lean into who he says you need to be. And who he says you are and who he created you to be. You were created in the image of God. And sin comes in and it corrupts that and it robs us of our identity. But Jesus died on the cross so that we could repent, so that we could turn from our sins, so that we could be found in him and be restored to God's uh, original intent uh, to restore our identity and who we are. 
I um, uh, God loves you. In fact, First Peter chapter two uh, verse nine says, "You are a chosen race. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession." That's God's promise to his followers, to, to, to followers of Jesus. If you're a child of God, you're significant because of who you belong to, because of whose child you are, because of who created you. That's where your identity is rooted in. It's your identity was never meant to be rooted in all the things you could accomplish and all the things you could do. Because if you wanna uh, uh, get your identity from all the successes in your life, sometimes we have failures and that's gonna chip away at our identity. But God wants us to find our identity in whose we are. We're child, we're, 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 we're children of God. And so if we can nail that down, that's the first step in finding rest in Jesus. It's finding our identity in him, receiving that identity. Uh, the second thing is, is direction. Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 30, he says, I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. See, Jesus knew who he was trying to please. Jesus knew who he was living for, and it was his father. It was the father. Everybody had a plan for Jesus' life. Everybody had an idea of, of what direction he needed to go. Um, uh, I'm sure you feel that way. I'm sure you, you know a dozen different people that have a different direction for your life, different plan for your life. Uh, and, and you feel pulled in all these different directions. But I want to tell you right now that God has a plan and a direction for your life. Not only has he given you uh, uh, your identity, he's given you purpose. He's placed you here for such a time as this. And so Jesus knew that he lived to please his father above anybody else, above any man, any person, that he lived to please the father. The father replies in Matthew chapter 3, 17, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Matthew chapter 6, 33 says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. That's a great promise. It means that if I focus on the one thing and if I'm moving in the, the, the one direction, no matter what everybody else thinks I, I, I need to be doing, if I'm, if I'm moving in God's direction in the direction that he's put on my life, if I'm following him uh, and seeking to please God above anybody else, above any other person, any other human being, I'm living and I'm, I, I, and giving my life to please God, if that's my goal, if that's my purpose, I, well, one, it simplifies my life. It doesn't necessarily mean it's easy, but it means, man, I know what I'm living for. I know where uh, uh, the direction I want to move. And so that kind of leads into the third principle, which is uh, destination, the direction, direction into destination. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 14, listen to this. This is from the mouth of Jesus. My testimony is true, for I know where I came from and where I am going. See, Jesus knew what the ultimate goal was. He knew where the ultimate destination was. He knew that uh, he didn't belong here, that he was just visiting this place, that this is not his permanent home. Uh, and, and friends, if you're a Christian today, if you are following Jesus, uh, this earth is temporary. We know this, that we have an eternal home in the presence of God where we get new bodies fitted for eternity that we'll, that, uh, that we'll receive if we're found in Jesus Christ. And so not only do we know the direction to move in this life, we know the ultimate destination that the that, 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 we know what we want to accomplish. We want to, we want to please God. We want to live for Him. We want to live a life pleasing to the Lord, and that helps us to to plan our life. It helps us to set our priorities. Priorities are another thing. People, if you don't have, if you don't know how to set your own priorities, or you don't have your own priorities set, there are people that are going to be happy to set your priorities for you. But when we know the direction we're moving, and we know the destination. It should be easy for us to set our desti or, or, or to set our priorities. Uh, uh, it, it's not always easy to, to to lift those up, but at least we know uh, I'm living to please the Lord. That's my priority in life, more than anything else, more than making a lot of money, more than uh, uh, having the most friends in the world or, or having the most uh, Instagram followers or whatever. More than any of those things, uh, I just I want to please the Lord. That's my goal. That's my priority. And I want to love people the way he's called me to love people. I want to live uh, in the mission that he, in the purpose that he's, he's placed on my life. That's my priority. 
And so when we have those priorities and we know that we can head towards that goal, man, it's great. And it, and, 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 and it takes the stress out of being directionless and not knowing where we're going or where we want to end up. And we remove that stress out of our life. The next principle that I think uh, Jesus modeled for us uh, in, 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 in finding rest and relieving stress in life is, is focus or concentration. Uh, 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 Jesus, uh, there were people that are always trying to get Jesus kind of uh, distracted from his plan or uh, from his plan or his schedule. They were trying to, hey, Jesus, you need to come over here. You need to do this thing or you need to do that thing. And, 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 and uh, Jesus always stayed on mission. There's a story uh, uh, in Luke chapter 4, 42. It says, when day came, Jesus left and went to a secluded place and the crowds were searching for him and came to him and tried to keep him from going away from them. But he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. That's in Luke chapter 4, 42. See, they said, man, don't leave us. You've got to stay here, Jesus. You've got to do this. But Jesus was focused on the mission. It would have been easy for Jesus to say, wow, they really like me here. I'm popular here. Why do I want to go somewhere else where maybe people don't like me or they don't even want me to come? Because Jesus was focused on his direction and his destination and his identity. He knew who he was and what he was there to do. And he knew the one who had sent him and he wanted to please the father. And so he stayed focused on that because he knew that he was sent to go and preach the kingdom of God to all these other places. And so he was able to say, no, I, I, I gotta stay focused on what the Lord has given me to do. I think that's so important for us. And Jesus was a master at it. Everybody was trying to pull Jesus in different directions. They were always trying to interrupt him. They always had plan B for him or some other plan that they thought he should be doing. And, and, and uh, uh, Jesus' purpose, his plan, very clearly in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That was his purpose. That was his mission here. And he always knew that, and he was always focused on that. He was always able to concentrate on that. And, and, and he was determined. He was persistent. Um, you ever just feel like, uh, I, I, this is a silly question, but think about it for a minute. You ever just feel like there's just too much to do? There's just too many demands? And, and, and have you ever just gotten in so busy and in such a frenzy? This happens to me sometimes. That I don't know what to do anymore. There's so much to do that I'm just overwhelmed and I feel defeated. Because I'm like, I, I, there's just too much to do. I can't do. I can't do it all. And, I, and, and not being able to do it all, I feel like I can do nothing. And I just, I just... Ugh. I feel defeated, I feel deflated, I'm overwhelmed. I've been there. I get there often. We've all been there. And you know what the best way out of that is? Jesus did this all the time, was to focus and concentrate on what is the most important. And if we know our identity, we know who we are, we know our direction, and we know our destination, and we know the purpose and the mission that God has placed on our lives and in our heart, that helps us to identify this is the most important thing. And we start to focus on that one thing and we work on that one thing and we get through that. Inch by inch, we move forward one task at a time. And we're, we need to be able to focus on those things. Jesus didn't let interruptions prevent him from concentrating on the most important things in his life, most important things in his uh, mission. And so we need to know those things and we need to have a clear understanding of why God has placed us here uh, so that we can focus on the most important things. Uh, the next thing that Jesus did that helps us see how to handle stress and anxiety in our life is uh, prayer, meditation. Medita when I say meditation, I mean meditation specifically on the word of God. And, and, and praying to the Lord. Mark chapter one, verse 35 says, early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and he went away to a secluded place and was praying there. We read this in the, the gospels all the time. Jesus was always getting up early and he was go, always going off to a secluded place to go and pray and to spend time in prayer, focused on, 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 on just the Lord. We need to make a, a, a habit in our lives. Stress is a problem. We need to get better at at just oh, 
breathing in the word of God and, and meditating on the word of God and then spending time in the spirit, just praying to him, seeking him, quieting ourselves and allowing God to speak into our lives. Uh, no matter how busy Jesus got, he was never too busy to not let that be a part of his life. That was always a part of his life. I love Psalm 46, 10. It says, be still and know that I am God. I am so convinced that so many of our problems, so many of our issues with stress come from an inability to just sit still sometimes. To just oh, take a deep breath and focus on the Lord and focus on his word. Focus on the creation around us. I'm looking out my window, just at the wind blowing through the trees and and, and, and man, it's just good to, man, God's created uh, a beautiful world around us. And just even to be able to sit in this world that, we're, that we live in and be able to meditate on, on God's creative power and his beauty. We need to get good at that because that helps us, that helps us to, 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 get our focus where it needs to be and be like, yeah, that's right. God is good and God is big and God has a plan. And even though I feel like everybody's pulling me in every direction, I know that God is leading me in his direction. And so we need to get good at, at prayer and meditation. We need to make that a regular habit in our lives. Uh, if, if, if we want to deal with stress the way that Jesus did, he did it all the time. Uh, number six is, is, relaxation <laughs> sometimes it's hard for me to relax sometimes I'm like oh man I'm tired I gotta go to bed and then I go lay in bed and I just stare at the ceiling my thoughts they run wild I go crazy <laughs> but Jesus again Mark 6 31 come away by yourselves to a secluded secluded place and rest for a while for there were many people coming and going and they did not have time to eat they were busy we're all busy we all get busy but we need to find ways to rest. You need rest. You were designed, God created you and created your body to need rest. And sometimes we just feel like, oh, we gotta pick up the pace more. We gotta go faster. We gotta work harder. We gotta do more, 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 more. And sometimes Jesus is saying, man, no, just stop and come away for a while and rest. If, if, if you're stressed, if you're anxious, it could be that you need to learn to rest better. And that comes out of identity. It comes out of, uh, direction and destination and focus uh, it, it comes out of prayer and meditation as we learn those things it leads us into a place where we should be able to rest and relax in the presence of God and the knowledge of who he is and as we have faith that he's in control that he's got a plan for us we, we, we can take time to rest and relax you need to do that sometimes we think oh we don't need to do that if Jesus needed to do it and there's many examples of him doing it then surely we need to do it. And so we need to make time uh, as we think about how we handle stress to, to rest and to re relax. Um, sometimes when I feel like, man, life is just out of control and I'm overwhelmed and I got so much going on, I just need to step away and, and, and uh, I'll, I'll go to the beach. We live pretty close to the beach. I love the beach. The ocean is just so calming to me. I love to go sit on the beach and just listen to the waves feel the breeze. Uh, I love to go to the mountains. We're not as close to the mountains, but just to, to be in the mountains and listen to the, the wind through the trees and just say, man, thank you, God. You're so good. And just rest in his presence and rest in his creation. Whatever that looks like for you, you've got to make time to rest. Exodus 31, 15 says, for six days work may be done, but on the seventh day, there is a Sabbath of complete rest, holy to the Lord. See, the Sabbath was made special. It was made for man because God knows that our physical and our emotional and our spiritual needs demand breaks, demand rest. And Jesus survived and Jesus accomplished so much, not because he was able to busy himself all the time, but Jesus was able to do so much and accomplish so much and handle all that stress because he knew how to rest. He knew how to get away from it. And he knew how to, 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 to not just rest. We need physical rest, absolutely. We need to sleep, but we also, we need to rest in the Lord, in the presence of the Lord sometimes. Uh, it, uh, the last one I want to talk about today is, is, is dedication. Jesus was dedicated. 
Matthew 11, 28 through 30. I'll read it to you again. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, we need to be dedicated to Christ. We need to uh, be committed to Christ enough to give our stress to him, to have enough faith to know that, man, God's in control. He knows what he's doing. And I need to come to him and I need to, I need to receive the rest that Jesus promises me. I need to receive the rest that he says that I, that, that he gives. It's interesting in that verse we just read, Jesus doesn't say, come to me and I'll give you more guilt. I'll give you more stress. I'll give you more activities. I'll give you more worries. I'll give you more things. He says, come to me and I'll give you rest. That's a promise that if we're, if we're committed to him, that if we're dedicated to him, if we're following him, that we'll receive the rest that we need, that, that, that there'll be relief for the stress of this life. That's not to say that we never get stressed, but we know how to manage it and we know how to keep it from overtaking us and, and consuming us. Philippians chapter four, verse six through seven says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. That's a good one too. There's a whole nother study we'll do on that, but it was supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God. Listen to this, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Oh man, that's good. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. What a, what, a, what a promise. Matthew chapter 6, 34 says, Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. There are so many promises of rest in the word of God, that if we would be found in Jesus, if we would come to him when we're weary, he'll give us the rest and the strength that we need. I'm gonna pray for us and uh, uh, I just wanna remind you, whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, um, man, Jesus loves you so much. And coming to him always starts with a relationship and, and uh, th that we believe in him and that we also recognize our need for him as, as sinners, that, that, that we need to be forgiven of our sins and that we need to be set free from our sins so we don't have to live in that junk anymore so we can live the life that God has called us to live. And that all starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I wanna encourage you, if, 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 if you feel like you don't have a relationship with Jesus or you've never asked Jesus to, 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 to forgive you of your sins and set you free from your sins, would you say this prayer with me today? I wanna to invite you into relationship with him. Dear Jesus, I need you. I know that I have sinned. I've done wrong against God. And I ask that you would forgive me of my sins and that you would set me free of my sins, that you would help me to sin no more. I pray that you would uh, help me to live for you. And Jesus, I pray that you would give me the rest that you promise. I'm coming to you. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose again. And I thank you for everything you've done. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey, if you said that prayer with me if the first time uh, uh, or any time, if you said that prayer at all or for any reason, would you go on our church website, torrencenaz.com? Uh, there's a little button you can email me on there. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to talk to you and connect with you. Uh, uh, go ahead and email us at the church office or give us a call. The, the phone number's on there too. But um, I'm gonna, before we end this time, I wanna pray for all of us. Um, uh, whether it's your first time saying that prayer, whether you've said that prayer many times, uh, maybe you've been a Christian for, for decades. Uh, man, we all need to be reminded of the rest that's found in, in, in Jesus and we need to come to him, amen. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for the rest that you give your people. And I pray, Lord, that as we, we uh, live in very tumultuous times, we live in very difficult times, crazy times and busy times, Lord, that you would remind us that you're in control, that you have a plan for each one of us, that our identity is rooted in you and who you've created us to be. And would you help us, Lord, to understand what it means to come to you? 
to bring our burdens to you, Lord Jesus, and to find rest not in the things of this world, rest not in our own abilities or our own financial stability, Lord, but that we would find our, our rest, Lord, and our comfort and our restoration completely in who you are, Jesus, and who you've created us to be, Lord. Help us to know what it is to come to you. We love you, and we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, have a great week. Be encouraged. God is good. All the time, God is good. Even when things are bad, God is good. Uh, I hope to see you real soon. We have Sunday morning services live and in person, 10.30 a.m. on Sundays. Would love to see you there. Please come down and join us. Uh, introduce yourself. Would love to get to know you. Uh, also, Wednesday nights uh, at uh, 6.30, uh, we have Bible study. We're going through the book of John right now. We're having a great time. But that's open to anybody, all ages. Come on down uh, uh, Wednesday night, uh, Sunday morning. We'd love to see you. Have a great week. And God bless. Thanks so much.